Howdy, y'all. Uh, hope you're doing okay. Uh, so, hey, before I forget, um, the three videos you're supposed to watch for yesterday, a few people emailed and said they are having troubles with their computer opening them up. <coughs> At the conclusion of this video, I'm going to uh, include those three videos into the end of this video, okay? So, um, uh, but for today, um, we're going to be talking about the barometer. So, uh, <coughs> we've talked about yesterday atmospheric and atmospheric pressure. So, a barometer is a device which is simply able to uh, allow us to measure the atmospheric pressure. So, so you can see this picture here of a barometer. Um, basically, there's a dish. The dish is filled with mercury. There's a tube uh, a, or a column and um, the height of the mercury in the column tells us the atmospheric pressure. So how does this thing work? Well, um, well, so <coughs> the, uh, the mercury column is pushing down, it's exerting a force, force of gravity, okay? Also, the weight of the air is also forcing down and is pushing down on the mercury. As the, the, the weight of the air, as the atmosphere is pushing down on this mercury, uh, it's forcing it up the column. So uh, these two pressures <coughs> have to equalize. So they equalize by, the, by when the air pushes down the mercury, the mercury goes up and it causes a, an equalization of the pressure. So, um, so it doesn't matter how wide this column is, okay, uh, the, it's, it's going to be whatever the width of the column, the weight is, is, the weight is the same as 30 kilometer column of air, the 30 kilometers, that's the thickness of the atmosphere. If the air pressure goes up, the mercury goes up, okay? Um, so, <coughs> why don't we use water? In, instead of mercury. Well, water, A, water does exert pressure. B, water can't be used because it sticks to glass. Well, even mercury sticks to glass. Last chapter, we talked about cohesion, adhesion. So um, uh, water can be used. Sure, it can. But yes, the barometer would be too tall. And if you remember from yesterday, that column of water would be 10.3 meters tall, that big long straw, 10.3 meters tall, whereas mercury is 13.6 times denser um, than, mercury is denser than water, so the column is 13.6 times smaller. It's much easier to use. Now, we can also use an aneroid barometer, and I'm sure many of you have an aneroid barometer in your house. <coughs> so an aneroid, <coughs> sorry, uh, an aneroid barometer is a metal box which has been partially sucked, the air sucked out. And now um, as the pressure changes on this lid, the pressure changes, there's a dial inside that spins and it tells you the pressure. Uh, and it, this is the same exact concept with an altimeter. An altimeter tells you your elevation above sea level. Uh, so it's the same thing. Uh, atmospheric pressure decreases as you get higher. So you can use a barometer to measure your, your elevation. Oh, we're going to stop there. Okay. <coughs> we're going to stop here. Uh, uh, if you want to watch the three videos from yesterday... Here they are. Uh, I'm going to play these three videos right now um, so that you can go through this. And the questions, the questions uh, that I had you answer yesterday come right from these three videos. So hopefully you didn't just Google and find out whatever. They should come right from here. So uh, here we go. We're going to be playing these three videos right now. We live at the bottom of an ocean of air. Unlike the nearly constant density of water, the density of the atmosphere varies a lot. The drawing here indicates the thinning of the atmosphere with altitude. 
air density is significantly greater at sea level than above where commercial airplanes fly. Unlike water below a well-defined surface, an exact height of the atmosphere has no real meaning. Air gets progressively thinner and thinner the higher one travels upward. Eventually, it thins out to emptiness in interplanetary space. The density of air in the atmosphere can be compared to the density of feathers in a deep pile of feathers. Blocks of feathers at the bottom are more squashed than blocks near the top. So it is with the atmosphere. Here's a sketch about to scale of a segment of planet Earth. I'll draw the atmosphere, say 99% of the atmosphere, with this blue line. We see it's very thin. For our approximately 30 kilometer thick atmosphere, it's a tiny distance compared with the almost 6,400 kilometer Earth radius. That's one half of 1% of Earth's radius, akin to the thickness of skin on a common apple. So we live at the bottom of this ocean of air, which like water in a lake, exerts pressure. The strength of the atmospheric pressure was convincingly demonstrated in 1654 by Otto von Gierich, who evacuated most of the air from a pair of sealed hemispheres. Two teams of horses couldn't pull a pair of the evacuated hemispheres apart. Here's a father and son physics professor team, Per Olof and Johann Zetterberg, doing the same thing with a classroom pair of what are called Magdeburg hemispheres. Here's a cylinder with a piston that supports a load. When air is removed from the cylinder, there's an upward force on the piston from air outside up against the bottom of the piston. This force is large enough to lift a heavy weight, and if the inside diameter of the cylinder is 10 centimeters or greater, a person can be suspended by this force. I ask this question. Is the piston that supports the load pulled up or pushed up? I hope you didn't say pulled up because it's common to think that the load is pulled up by a force of suction. Can a vacuum exert such a force? No, for a vacuum is an absence of matter, a condition of nothingness. So how can nothing exert a force? The hemispheres in our demonstration are not sucked together, nor is the piston holding the weight up and the cylinder sucked upward. The hemispheres and the pistons are pushed by the weight of the atmosphere. Just as water pressure is caused by the weight of water, atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of air. We have adapted so completely to the invisible air that we don't feel it and sometimes forget that it has weight. Air is heavy if you have enough of it. If your kid sister doesn't believe that air has weight, ask her to imagine that you hand her a plastic bag of water. She'll tell you that it has weight. But if you hand her the same bag of water while she's submerged in a swimming pool, she won't feel its weight. That's because she and the bag is surrounded by water. Likewise with the air that surrounds us. The reason we don't feel the weight of air crushing against our bodies is that pressure inside our bodies balances the pressure of the surrounding air. There's no net force for us to sense. At sea level, one cubic meter of air has a mass of about 1.25 <laughs> kilograms. So the air in kid's sister's small bedroom weighs about as much as she does. As said earlier, air density decreases with altitude. For example, at 10 kilometers, one cubic meter of air has a mass of about four tenths of a kilogram, quite a bit less than at sea level. Consider the mass of air on this upright 30 kilometer tall bamboo pole that has an inside cross-sectional area of one square centimeter. If the density of air inside the pole matches the density of air outside, the enclosed air has a mass of about one kilogram, which weighs about 10 newtons. So air pressure at the bottom of the one square centimeter pole would be about 10 newtons per square centimeter. Of course, the same is true without the bamboo pole. There are 10,000 square centimeters in one square meter. So a column of air one square meter in cross section that extends up through the atmosphere has a mass of about 10,000 kilograms, which weighs about 100,000 newtons. That's 10 to the fifth newtons per square meter, or approximately 100 kilopascals. The standard international unit of pressure is the pascal, which is one newton per square meter. 
So 10 to the fifth pascals, roughly atmospheric pressure, is about 100 kilopascals. We write atmospheric pressure equals 10 to the fifth newtons per square meter, which can be expressed as 100 kilopascals. The average <laughs> pressure at sea level is often called one atmosphere, abbreviated ATM. In British units, the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. So we see that the weight of air bearing down on a one square meter surface at sea level is about 10 to the fifth newtons, producing an atmospheric pressure of 10 to the fifth newtons per square meter. To be more exact, the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101.3 kilopascals. We don't feel atmospheric pressure because pressures within our bodies balance it, just as fish deep in the ocean push outward against the huge pressures of seawater. If we remove or reduce these internal pressures, the results can be dramatic. Dan Johnson shows what happens to a gallon can when a partial vacuum occurs inside the can. Low pressure inside, not quite a vacuum, can't balance the outside atmospheric pressure. So the relatively greater atmospheric pressure on the outside crushes the can. More dramatic is evacuating air from a 50 gallon oil drum. E.O. Zetterberg uses a vacuum pump to reduce air pressure inside the drum. Barbara and Thomas Brage assist as atmospheric pressure on the outside does its thing to the applause of the class looking on. So was the drum sucked in by the partial vacuum inside? or was it pushed inward by the outside atmospheric pressure? Ask your friends this question. I want to leave you with a question. Atmospheric pressure against a common window produces an enormous force on the window. Why doesn't this force break the window? Until next time, good energy. Where's your um? Okay, video here comes the next stuff. video. Oh, sorry. You can say hi to my niece if you want. Right there. Air have any weight? It turns out air has weight, a lot of weight, if you talk about a lot of air. Okay, what's it go here? One cubic meter of air. It's about like this, huh? It's like about like this. <laughs> bam, bam. Bam. One cubic meter of air, like a little small truckload, right, has one and a quarter kilograms, okay? That's about two and three quarter pounds. So try this tonight when you go home. Open up the fridge. Now your fridge is about three quarters of a cubic meter. Ask the people at the house, hey, the air inside there have any weight? What are they going to say? Yeah, it's got some weight. See that big grapefruit sitting there on the shelf? Does that have any weight? Yeah. Say, so which weighs more, the grapefruit or the air? Which weighs more? Grapefruit. Take a guess. You got about two pounds of air in there. And if that grapefruit's less than a two pounder, then the weight of air in that refrigerator is greater than the weight of, so greater than the weight of a dozen of eggs. A dozen of eggs weigh less than the air in an ordinary sized refrigerator. Okay, coming up for the last video. Here we go. You ready? This one's quick, so pay attention. Hi, gang. I'm going to pour some colored water from one glass to the other. <coughs> What's inside this glass? Don't say nothing, because in here is some air. And I can show you that by pouring the air from here into here. But I'll have to do that under the water. Watch this. The air inside here. Watch. You get me? I poured the air from the bottom to the top. That's physics, and that's fun. Yumsies. Okay, friends. Uh, that is all that we have for today. I'll see you tomorrow.